recording this video Sunday 4th of August 2013 I'm going to do a couple of videos here one's going to be a day trading video and this one is going to be the uh, weekly overview video looking at the daily and the weekly charts seems to go down quite well people like this so I'm going to review what's going on at the moment um, we're coming up to a really absolutely critical week we've got turning points potentially lining up uh, on a whole bunch of markets particularly on the currencies and I want to show you that because potentially my kind of bullish call on the US dollar uh, is going to kind of turn around and I want to show you what's going on there so first of all uh, the yen and the euro those are the most uh, kind of two most important currencies and at the moment let's look at the weekly chart here the yen we've had this massive decline 30 percent off since October of last year now trend changes always look for the first bullish and first bearish divergence signals kind of going on so here's our first bearish divergence that kind of maxed out on the weekly chart here we had exhaustion selling getting the move going a really weak retrace back up and then we fell off the cliff through support on the weekly chart on the way down now because we're below support we still have to make pullback to end of trend on the weekly chart but um, we could have found this left shoulder here and be heading up to that resistance level so we'll potentially have strength in yen and I've been talking about this for the last 10 days or so and the reason why is we've got our exhaustion selling on a left shoulder and the first bullish divergence kind of comes in here to mark this this bullish divergence is playing off this existing selling going on here so this is just uh, the, the initial selling getting the move going this is the selling kind of ending this leg and this is the bullish divergence that comes in we get another exhaustion selling signal with this amateur down bar on that week now in the meantime what we had was we had the first kind of short covering rally here and we've come back we've come back into that zone 99 here on the futures contract and we've kind of come down 102 and a half is absolutely critical here look out over the next couple of days if we get through that on the resistance uh, breakthrough resistance on the daily chart here we're potentially breaking into an uptrend on the daily chart we've put in that left shoulder we're heading up to find resistance on this weekly chart and we're going to have strength in the yen strength in the yen is going to you know call into question the carry trade we're going to have equities kind of under pressure so 102 and a half is really critical and we're getting you know with Thursdays and Fridays activity you know we kind of bounce back up on Friday so look for Monday and Tuesday Day's activity to see if we kind of get through there. Now the other currency that's looking interesting, similar type thing, is Euro. Now the Euro is quite nicely coming uh, away from this resistance that we put in, you know, a month or so ago, and we were kind of moving down. We bounced all the way back up. So looking on the daily chart here, you can see um, blue professional bar kind of comes in at low. We break below it a fractionally but we kind of come back up we close uh, into it and then break above it the next blue professional bar the low of that one holds we're heading back up I know we've got Rambo patterns here but these last blue professional bars are showing us that potentially uh, the um, professionals were buying this dip here they were buying the volatility here and look we're coming back up to this resistance level here which will also be a resistance level on the weekly chart euro um, daily and weekly chart here if we bust through 134 uh, kind of here on the weekly chart here we're going to break into a very strong uptrend on the way back up here again look for the weekly chart for you know the exhaustion patterns to help you with trend so we've had our pullback to end of trend with exhaustion selling down here first bullish divergence comes in when we have exhaustion on an end of trend I always say wait for the second cyclical turn after end of trend bang this one comes in and that's where we get a flush signal flushing out the last of the bars so in this high time frame chart on this weekly chart you know that bottom down here at 120 uh, looks pretty solid we've come in to test it at 125s that's held and we're heading back up so again the next couple of days breaking up through 134 will be absolutely critical now because uh, the euro and the yen are the two biggest components of the dollar chart and potentially they're breaking into uptrends we're down you know at supports and potentially break into a downtrend on the on dollar index so here's the weekly support here and the daily support here little blue professional bar bounce from there and so on but if we look at the weekly chart for again kind of signals on uh, exhaustion patterns this was exhaustion by and bearish divergence kind of rolling over and so on now the strength that I've seen in the dollar index over the last couple of years has worked out you know we've we've found 77 78 was a really important level and we bounced from there 
but 85 seems to be the limit for it. We haven't been able to get through there. And, you know, I kicked myself because I think I thought this was really going to be a breakthrough resistance up through 85s and away into an uptrend and was not the case. It kind of fell off from there and we're back in this kind of range uh, down in the 80s. So, you know, look for this, a, a breakthrough 81, uh, a breakthrough 80 and a half here on the weekly chart will take us into downtrends on, on dollar index. It's, it's a question of waiting to see, you know, it looks like we've got, you know, the energy to do this. It looks like the yen has gone, you know, as, as far as it's going to go for the time being, because we're seeing these exhaustion patterns and bullish divergence starting to come in. So, and all I'm saying is this is a short covering rally. Yen is still going to be weak in the long term, but we could be pushing back up to find that resistance. So there's dollar index. Now, there's a slight difference between, I don't think risk on and risk off is playing out in the currencies here. What I think is going on is this is carry trade uh, type stuff. And remember that during the depths of the crisis, you know, the thing that surprised everybody was strength in dollar index. Everybody, because the problems were happening in the US, the funds were needing to be repatriated back into US dollars. So the, the margin calls were happening in the US. The banks were having, the financial institutions were repairing their balance sheet in the US. They were selling risky assets or assets around the world, repatriating those funds, and that led to the strength in the US dollar. Now, uh, the US, to, to quite a large extent, through the you know generosity of savers and and uh, you know retirees, uh, without them even knowing it, have been funding the repair of the balance sheets of financial institutions in the US. The institutions that are still weak are the European institutions and, to some extent, the Japanese institutions. If you start to see problems happening in those markets, you know if the Europeans are running into in, into problems, uh, and I think this last little Fed communique out of I forget which Fed. Um, you know, they criticized what the ECB were doing. That was a little bit of a, a nasty little move, a bit of a shot across the bows there. So that potentially, uh, we could be, they could be signaling that there are problems in Europe and Europe really needs to act, get its act together and the ECB needs to be far, far more, you know, kind of proactive. In the meantime, if the banks in Europe and Japan start to start running into problems and we've got, you know, carry trades calling money back into uh, the the lenders in in Japan, and then we've got kind of you know uh, financial institutions running into problems in Europe, uh, repairing balance sheets. You know that could be the reason why we've got you know the euro and the yen potentially you know strengthening over, over the next couple of months. Now the currencies are not doing too well. Is the Aussie and the loonie? This is the Aussie called this, you know, the the, the um, break of 102 and then parity on the Aussie dollar led to this huge decline. We're now down in 80, at 88, uh, 88 cents versus the US dollar. Um, now, we're about to make pullback to end of trend. So this could have run its course, you know, for the time being. I still think it's weak. We've not seen exhaustion selling on the downside here. Uh, on the Aussie dollar this way down. We haven't, it was big. Uh, it's been, you know, extreme kind of selling down here. I don't think this is over. I think the Aussie is still going to be weak because people around the world are not seeing kind of economic recovery. Um, and the loony to some extent, uh, because it's commodity currency as well, I, I don't think it's particularly strong. It's the breakout to the upside in the euro, the yen, that's kind of, you know, got, is on my radar screen kind of right now. And to some extent, the pound will uh, will appreciate a little bit because of the strength in the euro. Um, so again, 154 here on the way up. You know, we've had blue professional down bars down here at 150. We had this huge kind of move uh, breaks the other way, and you know we've got cyclical support in here. You know, on the weekly chart, um, you know all the patterns, the exhaustion sellings have been on the downside here. Bullish divergence kind of come in, so there could be strength in the the pound. Look for 154, kind of a break above that potentially. But the important ones are the euro and the yen uh, for breakouts. 102 and a half in the yen, and 134 on, on the euro will be kind of critical levels going forward. So um, that's potentially kind of the backstory kind of around what what is going on. But let's wait wait and see. You know, by the end of the week, we'll be you know it'll be clear as day as to what's actually happened, whether these resistance levels have held, you know, we've, we've pushed above them and kind of broken back down, or we've kind of strongly gone through them. What would be nice, you know, com nice confirmation I always like with breaks is what I call, um, well, Wyckoff called it uh, jumping the creek, but it's a blue professional bar through a resist previous resistance line, kind of, you know, making sure that, um, you know, that's kind of solidly crossed. The professionals jump on board and, and kind of push it up. So let's wait and see. So those are all the currencies, what's going on there. Now, because potentially we've got some uh, 
some weakness in dollar index, gold and silver potentially could be rallying. Now, everybody likes to talk about gold and silver being, uh, you know, uncertainty. When there's uncertainty and, and risk, you know, bounds, people jump into the uh, into gold and silver. And you know, people also talk about the connection between gold and silver and money printing. Well, you know, gold's been on a tear on the way down. Uh, over the last year, uh, and yet the money printing has still kind of continued. I don't think that's you know the kind of primary driver. Gold is about risk, and we've basically been in a situation where we're kind of risk off, and people have been you know um, not so concerned about kind of buying uh, gold as as a kind of uh, as a play to, to for safety. Certainly in Asia, they've kind of taken advantage of the low price in gold and silver and kind of jumped in those markets. But you know, and, and you can read all all the. Uh, um, kind of the backstory by the gold bugs on on what might be going on there, but similar to the Japanese yen, we've had this really big decline in gold and silver, and potentially uh, we're finding a little bit of a bottom. I don't think the move is completely over because on the weekly chart on silver we've got to make pullback to end of trend. But similar type situation, you look at silver maxed out with our exhaustion buying bearish divergence kind of comes in. We've put in a final pullback to end of trend. We we fall off. Weekly chart, we then came back into a flush pattern here at mid 30s and we fell off from there and we're back down uh, now at 18 19 dollars. But on this move down, we put in our exhaustion selling and a bullish divergence, first bullish divergence here, and that potentially is a left shoulder, a left shoulder from which we could bounce and then form a pullback and a downtrend. But it we could give us strength in silver and gold for the next few weeks on the daily chart. You know, this thing's been ratcheting down with all of these exhaustion selling signals, been violent on the way down. We put in a few pullback to end of trends. This is pullback to dirty end of trend. And what's interesting on Friday's activity on silver, we had a blue professional up bar kind of come in, potentially jumping the, through there, through the 20 level, into an uptrend. So that's jumping the creek potentially into an uptrend on the daily chart, which will need to run its course. So silver, we could see some strength on that. Gold, similar type situation. You know, gold maxed out up in the just under 2,000 exhaustion buying. We had first bearish divergence came in. You know, almost a year later on the weekly chart here, but there it is. Come comes in. Finally, couldn't get through 1,800. Bang, we fall off. Now on the way down here, we've had our exhaustion selling. First bullish divergence kind of come in here. So potentially again another left shoulder from which we'll have a bounce into pullback to end of trend. And then on the daily chart here, you can see we've come into you know again really violent selling down here. Flushing out pattern the last time down to 1,200, which seems like a very you know kind of attractive price to jump back in here, and we've had this kind of down bar here. It wasn't a blue professional bar like silver, uh, but we closed very close to the highs, 1350 on the way up. If we break into an uptrend uh, during this week, 1350 a break through that would be the signal that would take us into an uptrend on the daily chart because we've we've seen all the damage on the downside. Uh, on the weekly chart, and we're just going to have a rally back up. So, look for that uh, over the next uh, week. Now, bonds again, another really important chart here, kind of going on. <clears throat> now, the bond market. I missed the uh, collapse in the bond market just because I thought, you know, there was still kind of risk in the system, and it's been such a, an incredible rally in bonds. You know, we've had exhaustion patterns all the way up, uh, but you know, it was a a little bit of a classic, you know. It was pullback to end of trend with exhaustion buying, bearish divergence, flush pattern up here. You know, the exhaustion pattern was on the end of trend, so wait for the second cyclical turn after end of trend. We went to it just a little fraction bit higher, and then flush pattern, bang, we kind of fallen off. Now, I don't think this is necessarily the beginning of you know the the bear 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 market in bonds. Yeah, we'll get that. I don't know when, uh, but it, it will. I don't think this is the this is it. Uh, this is some some serious weakness that we've seen over the last several months. But we've come into and this week's activity was kind of critical with the FOMC and the employment numbers and so on coming out on Friday. This is it. Pullback to end of trend's gone off, and I'm showing you the 10-year chart here because it's actually signaled end of trend here. On this left shoulder, here we go. Here's our exhaustion selling. First bullish divergence. We come in here. Less selling going on, so potentially that's a good signal to be uh, for a little bit of a rally in bonds. It also means that we've put in cyclical weekly support here on the weekly chart here, and this activity down here was a Rambo pattern. It was pretty big reading in terms of selling that we had down here didn't actually come out to be an exhaustion pattern, but it was pretty severe. And so, you know, kind of extreme selling into Rambo patterns means the amateurs are kind of 
you know, jumping board at the end, tail end of this move, and potentially we can have kind of strength going forward. So again, looking for this type of resistance level up here. You know, we've, it's a support at the moment. We could get a little bit of a bounce. Let's let's wait again. Wait for you know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If this strength continues, this blue professional bar continues, and we break through the highs of that and keep on going during Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that will signal that this was like a U-turn. They were buying the lows. You know, we had another kind of fake down move here. They bought the lows, bought it back up. So if we get continuation on the way up, that potentially is uh, a little bit of a local bottom in, in bonds. So that's the 10-year picture. The 30-year, similar type thing. It hasn't actually signaled an end of trend yet, but if we get continued strength on Monday, that'll go off on Monday. So what does that mean? Because what I'm talking about is potential strength at, of the yen and bonds. And if uh, the yen strengthens, and bonds go up, that means interest rates, um, uh, yen strengthening uh, means that the carry trade is potentially at risk. If bonds start to strengthen, uh, that means that people will uh, trade out of equities and into bonds because they just move between the two you know, kind of asset classes and they, as they become less and more attractive relative to each other. So um, equities, we could have you know some weakness in driven by those kind of two factors. I know I've been saying this for quite some time, but you know, uh, I do think we're running out of puff on the upside, and I'll get to the equity chart just shortly. So crude, crude's gone nicely. We had this breakout trade above 98, and that's kind of uh, going up. We've had a little bit of weakness on Friday. I'm not too worried about that um, because we're b above resistance on these two time frames. So uh, it it should be in a, an uptrend because of that. We're above resistance in these two time frames. That means this needs to play out to at least pull back to end of trend on the daily chart. Um, copper, copper should also be weakening, uh, strengthening. But you know, I'm just concerned that we're below support here on this weekly chart. Um, three three bucks is a really important level, kind of down here, and you can see exhaustion patterns down at the bottoms, uh, flush patterns, and so on. You know, blue professional bars have kind of held that low. We're kind of bouncing back up. So let's wait and see. We've got cyclical support in here. Potentially, you know, copper, if copper kind of starts to strengthen, then those two kind of commodities, which are kind of global growth type commodities. Uh, but also, you know, they go up because the US dollar is potentially going down. Um, lastly, equities. So here we go, equities. And the reason I've been talking about this is potentially this is a bearish divergence kind of setting up here on the weekly chart. So our, our exhaustion um, buying. Uh, on the way here on a left shoulder, followed by a bearish divergence, and then we get a weakness. We're above resistance on weekly, so I'm just talking about a, a play down to that kind of support level. And I know this you know, looks like it's kind of going up. We're still above resistance on the lower time frames on the tip bar charts, um, but you know, 1680 for me is kind of critical level. So let's just see what kind of plays out. I think the next few days are going to be absolutely kind of key. Um, yeah, there's the uh, 40,500 tip bar chart, just playing around those 1700 type levels here. Um, so we'll see if we could go for another pop. Um, I haven't uh, looked closely at the kind of charts. I'll just wait and see how it kind of plays out uh, Sunday night into uh, Monday uh, to get a sense of where the breaks actually might happen. But um, I just think this week's going to be kind of critical because those uh, the yen and the euro kind of plays are looking to be a little bit of a pop, and we've got uh, U.S. Uh, bonds um, potentially making a bottom as well. So these things that have been you know kind of in play for several months uh, potentially could uh, be important turning points happening this week. Let's uh, review at the end of the week and uh, see kind of where it goes. But that's kind of what I'm seeing on my charts.